I try rolling it, morons. It's a barrel. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the most ridiculous criminals the world has ever seen. Do you have, a, do you have bigger bags for atlases or dictionaries, uh, sir? Number 30, Charles Ray Fuller. Who amongst us wouldn't love $360 billion? Unfortunately, you can't just waltz into a bank and hand the teller a check for that amount. Maybe that might you know, no, cause a red flag at, at the bank that you were trying to cash a $360 billion check? Well, it turns out you can. Just ask Charles Ray Fuller. In 2008, Fuller walked into a bank in Fort Worth, Texas with a personal check in the amount of $360 billion. He claimed his girlfriend's mother gave him the check to start a record company. Unsurprisingly, bank employees immediately notified the authorities and Teller was arrested for forgery. My favorite part of the article says, Tellers at the Fort Worth bank were immediately suspicious. Perhaps it was a 10 zeros on the personal check that tipped them off. Even worse, he was carrying both illicit substances and a handgun at the time of his arrest, so he was also hit with charges of drug possession and unlawful carrying of a weapon. Oops. Because we do the stories every week. I, it, you're driving next to a guy that's that dumb. They're everywhere. Number 29, Peter Kavanaugh. It's a tale as old as time. A criminal takes a picture of themselves doing something illegal, which ultimately lands them in jail. Believe it or not, jail, right away. Back in 2013, a man named Peter Kavanaugh worked with a London mob delivering shipments of drugs. While returning with the cash, Kavanaugh whipped out his mobile phone and took photos of himself with the massive stack of money. <laughs> but he wasn't counting on two of his dealers getting caught. After the two women were arrested for possession, they led the police straight to Kavanaugh, who was busted thanks to those damning photos on his phone. He was swiftly arrested and thrown in prison for three years. I've made a huge mistake. Number 28, Hannah Sabata. Taking a selfie is one thing. Openly bragging about robbing a bank on tape and then uploading it to YouTube is a whole new level of bold. Is bold the right word? But believe it or not, that's exactly what 19-year-old Hannah Sabata did back in 2012. Sabata stole $6,000 from a Nebraska bank and then made an incriminating video in which she admitted to the crime and flashed the cash. So bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. This video was uploaded to YouTube by user Jelly Beanie under the title Chick Bank Robber, and it has since amassed over 2 million views thanks to its notoriety. Sabato was arrested the same day the video was uploaded. Imagine that. I'm shot. <laughs> yeah. Number 27, Adam Valet. We don't know if committing a crime right in front of a police station is recklessly brave or ridiculously stupid. A little from column A, a little from column B. Probably the latter. In December of 2018, 26-year-old Adam Valet waltzed right up to the front door of the Gladstone Police Department in Oregon and tried stealing a locked bike. Police inside instantly noticed the crime on their surveillance cameras and watched in complete disbelief as Valet attempted to break the lock. Is he for real? Officers simply walked out the front door and confronted Valet, who probably couldn't believe that he had been caught. How did that happen? Surely it had nothing to do with the cameras everywhere, or the front door, or the window right beside him with Gladstone police written on it. Well, when you... Put it that way, yeah. Number 26, The Loud Getaway Donkey. This sounds like one of those fake news stories you'd read about in The Onion, but it's 100% true. Three criminals in the Colombian town of Juan de Acosta stole a number of items from a local shop and made their getaway on a stolen donkey. And they would have gotten away with it too if it wasn't for that darned donkey. All right, I hope you heard that. She called me a noble steed. She think I'm a steed? You see, the tired animal started to bray loudly and drew the attention of some nearby police officers. The thieves immediately bailed when the police sauntered over, leaving behind both the donkey and the stolen goods. The items were returned to the shop and the donkey was safely reunited with its owner. I'm a donkey on edge! Number 25, free beer. Who can deny the allure of free beer? Certainly not these 19 English criminals who fell for an oddly genius police sting. Hey, wait a minute. What about the old stinkeroo? 
Yeah, I'm in. The Derbyshire police had a number of wanted suspects who had evaded capture, and they were running out of options. So they cooked up a plan, offer them free beer and see who takes the bait. They phoned the suspects, posing as a company giving away crates of beer, and made a simple arrangement. Meet up at a specific location at a specific time, and they would hand over the beer, just like that. When the criminals arrived, they were greeted not by company men and free booze, but by police and handcuffs. How they fell for that one is beyond us. You're really good at that, Lloyd. I learned from the best. Number 24, Matthew McNally and Joey Miller. There are tons of ways to hide your face. Stockings, ski masks, those old-timey bandanas, and a permanent marker? Sharpie. Genius. Back in 2009, criminals Matthew McNally and Joey Miller tried breaking into a house in Carroll, Iowa. Witnesses described their getaway car to police, who quickly tracked it down and pulled it over. Inside were the two men, their faces scribbled with permanent marker like a coloring book that had felt the presence of a couple of toddlers. The men's hilarious mugshots were later released to the public, and the entire world couldn't stop laughing. The local police chief later claimed that it was the funniest thing he had seen in nearly 30 years on the force. <laughs> Number 23, Peter Addison. Now, we're certainly not condoning it, but if you break into a place, maybe don't write your real name on the wall. No one gave Peter Addison that terrific bit of advice. Addison broke into a Cheshire campground and trashed the place, leaving behind a mess and some messages written on the walls. One of them read, thanks for the stay, and of course, another read, Peter Addison was here. Police got Addison's personal information, and when they arrived to question him, he was wearing a t-shirt that was stolen from the camp. You know, just in case you thought it couldn't get any dumber. It can! Oh, baby, it can! Addison was arrested and ordered to pay 750 pounds in fines. Number 22, Shaquille McKinney. Hey, it's tough out there for a salesman. Counter it, with Sometimes you have to make cold calls. And that's exactly what teenage salesman Shaquille McKinney did. Just that the product that he was marketing to potential customers was cannabis. Sweet Mary Jane is my vice of choice, as you well know. Of course, I'm addicted to selling it, not consuming it. Yep, McKinney made a number of cold calls throughout the Pinellas County area in Florida, asking people if they needed some of the green stuff. Unfortunately, one of those people was a Gulfport police detective. He arranged to meet McKinney at a nearby school, and when the young boy arrived to deliver the drugs, he found a number of officers waiting for him. He was charged with drug possession with intent to distribute within 1,000 feet of a school. Feel manipulated. Thought we were gonna hang out. Number 21, Mganga Mganga. We don't know what's dumber, stealing a car while you're out on bond or stealing a car that you don't know how to drive. Not everybody knows how to do everything. Driving isn't the only thing. Just Teenager Mganga Mganga carjacked a woman named Melissa Peters as she was driving her kid to school. He hopped in her Dodge Caliber hatchback, but didn't get far, being unable to work the manual stick shift. Instead, he simply sat there in a panic, flicking the lights and turning on the wipers in a desperate attempt to work the transmission. <laughs> That's just the horn. I don't know that, do I? He was doing that for seven minutes while people around him called the cops. They soon arrived and arrested Mganga, sending him back to jail. Number 20, the doorbell liquor. You might not be familiar with Salinas, California, but it's the hometown of a few famous folks. Writer John Steinbeck, performer Vanessa Hudgens, and of course, 33-year-old Roberto Daniel Arroyo, perhaps more commonly known as the doorbell licker. Sylvia Dungan's decision to install a ring doorbell camera into her front door yielded a pretty curious home movie, starring Arroyo as he licked her doorbell for three whole hours. Yes. He's into this, he is, he is really into this. As the case went viral online, police quickly caught up with him. They pointed out that the clear quality of the footage made him much easier to identify. So a word of advice to would-be doorknob lickers, maybe make sure to check for a camera before going about your licking. Okay, that's why the doorknob and mm -hmm. um, this is completely white because okay. I, I wiped it down with four like medical grade okay. sanitary cloths. Number 19, Dennis Hawkins. Let's go, pal! I'm making a withdrawal here! Wearing a disguise is great for concealing one's identity if one is going to commit a crime. 
Someone should have told Dennis Hawkins that in order for a disguise to work, however, it has to be somewhat believable. Sit up and take a look, Gary. It's uncanny. Hawkins apparently missed that memo as he attempted to rob a bank wearing clown pants with a pair of fake breasts and a blonde wig. Sorry, um, um, they're new. Dr. Dorfman did an amazing job. It feels so real. Not only did he fail to cover his face, which still had a goatee and mustache, but the disguise also attracted attention, and the police easily apprehended him. Number 18, Daniel Glenn. I need you to arrest me. It's important to be prepared, especially if you're gonna rob a store. It's possible to be too prepared, though, which is exactly what happened to Daniel Glenn, who inexplicably decided to call ahead to ask the store how much cash was in the register. Imagine how that conversation went. Hello, I'd like to place a takeout order for all the money. Can I get fries with that? Confused and slightly alarmed, the store owner immediately called the police, who arrested Glenn on his way to the store. Number 17, Tony Van. Breaking the law requires a certain audacity. But Tony Van, a 37-year-old San Francisco hairstylist, took this to a new level when he drove a stolen car to his own trial. Van was facing charges for possessing a stolen $125,000 Porsche Carrera, so maybe he thought no one would notice when he arrived at court in a stolen Lexus instead. When Yorkshire puppies he'd left inside escaped through a window, sheriff's deputies noticed and ran the license plate. He was charged with possession of a stolen car and computer, as well as animal cruelty. Number 16, Trevor Jones. Ever just want to check your Facebook one more time? 34-year-old Trevor Jones couldn't resist when he broke into a house in Gwinnett County, Georgia in November 2011. Unfortunately for him, he used the home computer to log in. To be fair, it's no wonder he wanted some social media downtime. A woman whose house he'd tried to rob earlier had seen his car, taken his keys and wallet, and called the police. Jones had to swim a pond to escape before breaking into another nearby house. Still, he probably should have logged out of Facebook before leaving. Instead, he gave police everything they needed to identify him and issue arrest warrants. Number 15, Albert Bailey. Police in Connecticut say they had ample warning of a bank robbery because the two suspects called the bank ahead of time, telling an employee to get a bag of money ready. We're gonna say this now. If you're planning on robbing a store or bank, don't call ahead and ask them suspicious questions or warn them that you're coming. We are the ex-presidents. And as you can see, we are in fact robbing your bank. So with a little cooperation, I won't have to blow your heads off. Seemingly inspired by our previous entry, Albert Bailey called the bank and told him he was coming to rob them so that they would have the money ready for him when he got there. He even had an accomplice enter the bank with a note informing the tellers who Bailey was. Open the damn door! Obviously, the tellers had called the police, who apprehended Bailey immediately. Hold it right there. Go under arrest. I'm taking you in. Number 14, R.C. Gatlin. Curiosity killed the cat, and it also caught the criminal. In 1988, R.C. Gatlin came across some friendly Detroit police officers who were showing off their squad car's computer to a few local kids. His interest piqued. Gatlin approached the officers and asked them to give him a demonstration, voluntarily giving them his driver's license so they could run a background check. The cops complied and discovered Gatlin had an outstanding arrest warrant for armed robbery. It wasn't outstanding for much longer. The police arrested Gatlin on the spot. Still, he must have been impressed at how well the technology worked. Number 13, The Living Dead Burglar. There are times when playing dead might be a smart idea. In the animal world, the Virginia opossum plays dead to avoid predators, and some fish feign death to attract prey. But when a 23-year-old man broke into a Spanish funeral home in March 2008, he learned it isn't the most successful strategy in the human world. When police arrived to investigate the reported break-in, this man tried to fool them by lying on a table in a glass chamber used for wakes. Police were tipped off when they noticed that, for a corpse, he was awfully alive, breathing and everything. Number 12, Christian Bala. Polish intellectual Christian Bala believed he could get away with murder. He's now serving 25 years in prison. To commit a crime, you have to be slightly arrogant. If you get away with the crime, this arrogance can increase to the point where you feel untouchable. 
After murdering Darius Januszewski in 2000, Polish author Christian Bala wrote a novel titled Amok, which featured an eerily similar murder and details of the case only the murderer himself could have been privy to. The torture and murder of advertising executive Darius Januszewski goes unsolved for nearly three years until Christian Bala posts extracts of his first violent novel on his blog. Police uncovered clues relating to the murder, most of which came from the novel, eventually arresting and charging Bala. It was a very personal murder. You know, he had a score to settle. To their shock, they discovered on his computer plans to kill another person to tie in with the next novel he was planning to write. From his cell, Bala still rankles at how his novel was interpreted by the police. Bala's infamy lives on. In 2017, Amok was adapted into a feature film by director Kasia Adamik. Number 11. Christopher Cron It's only polite to answer the phone. It could be someone important, like the company that monitors the alarm you just tripped. On the night of his birthday, 47-year-old Christopher Cron broke into the Junkanoo bar on Fort Myers Beach to steal a bottle of Grand Marnier. When the alarm company called, he not only answered the phone, but also gave his full name. Because he hadn't hidden his face either, police were able to identify and arrest him the next day based on video surveillance of the break-in. Number 10. Eloise D. Reeves This is drugs. This is your brain on drugs. Buying drugs is an art, because you don't have the option to exchange or refund your purchases if you don't like the product you get. Apparently, no one told this to Eloise Reeves, who had the gall to go to the police to complain about the quality of the crack cocaine she'd just bought. She reportedly pulled the crack rock from her mouth and placed it on the cop car for the deputy to inspect. What you need? Uh, one please. One what? Uh, one, one rock of one crack. One crack. A crack rock. Is that enough? She was charged with the possession of cocaine and fined roughly $1,500. Number 9. Jonathan Ochola People have busy lives, and sometimes the only way to keep track of important events and dates is by keeping a diary. Dear Diary, Sleeping Beauty is having a slumber party tomorrow, but Dad says I can't go. He never lets me out after sunset. It might be a good idea to leave out any planned criminal activity, however. This seemingly never registered with Jonathan Ochola, who on June 12, 2010 wrote, Go Portsmouth robbery happens in his diary. Your diary proved very interesting to read. You read my, you read my journal? The police were able to link him to the robbery as the getaway driver, and when confronted, Ochola attempted to blame it entirely on his buddy. Arrest him. It's his fault. There is plenty of fault to be passed around. Number 8. Mark Smith We aren't sure if there's a criminal handbook, but we have to guess that falling asleep in the house you're robbing has to be high on the things not to do list. Mark Smith must not have read that page. By dinner, I popped a few more on top of some cocktails and a Valium or two. Smith decided to take a quick nap under his victim's bed, drunk on vodka and high on Valium, only to be discovered by the homeowner who immediately called the police. Not off. I wake up in strange places. I have no idea how I got there. You need to lighten up. We've heard of cat burglars before, but Smith seems to associate more with cat nappers. Where am I? What's going on? Number 7. Christopher Koch In any criminal endeavor, there's plenty that can go wrong. But step one is actually getting inside the building you hope to rob. 28-year-old Christopher Koch should have looked at the opening hours before attempting to rob a Citizens and Northern Bank in Liberty, Pennsylvania. Wearing a ski mask and gloves, he rushed the door, only to find the bank had just closed. To be completely fair, what kind of bank closes at noon? As Koch sheepishly retreated, employees inside wrote down his license plate number, and he was later arrested. And I want you to call the police. I want to go back to jail, please. Number 6. Derek Mosley So we know you're not supposed to bring a gun to a knife fight, but what about a baseball bat? Revolvers. Yeah, revolvers. <laughs> this is exactly what Derek Mosley did as he tried to rob a gun shop and steal a firearm equipped only with a baseball bat and a knife. I mean, it's a lot more compact than the flaming sword, but it's not nearly as impressive. It doesn't have that wrath of the almighty edge to it. Of course, the manager pulled out his own gun and held Mosley until the police arrived. Who would have imagined that the manager of a gun store would possess his own gun? Will wonders never cease? You can't do that. Number 5. Michael Anthony Fuller If you're already committing a crime, why not go big? In 2011, a 53-year-old North Carolina man tried to use a $1 million bill to buy a microwave, a vacuum cleaner, and other merchandise at Walmart. 
It must be worth a fortune. The total price of the goods was $476, so he was apparently fairly optimistic about how much change Walmart keeps in their registers. Unfortunately, the cashier didn't have $999,524 on him and knew there's no such thing as a $1 million bill, leading to Fuller's arrest. As it turns out, sometimes when it comes to going big or going home, you should probably just go home. Now give it back. Give what back? <sighs> Number 4. An Uncanny Resemblance A fake ID is a teenage rite of passage, but when you show a fake ID, you should make sure you're not handing it to the actual owner. You know, the one whose face is on the ID you're holding in your hand? That's what happened to one 26-year-old woman at Applebee's in 2013, when she showed the waitress Brianna Pretty her own driver's license as proof of age. It had been stolen with a bunch of other possessions a month earlier. Can't we resolve this conflict without anger? Instead of bringing her customer a margarita, Brianna brought the cops, and the thief was caught red-handed. Number 3. Ruben Zarate Open the safe, Pops. Open the goddamn safe! Deciding to rob a muffler shop, Ruben Zarate brought a gun and demanded the money, only to discover that the money was in the safe that could only be opened by the absent store manager. Now, I know you come back here to open your safe. So now you can open it. He decided it would be a good idea to leave his number with the store employees so that they could call him when the manager returned. Of course, they called the police, who set a trap for Zarate and arrested him. He's being placed under arrest. Are you kidding? Chance behind your back, sir. I'm trying to help here. Heck, we're just surprised Zarate didn't leave his name, address, and social security number, too. Drop the gun. You are under arrest. Number two, robber of Halifax Bank in London. Committing a crime is a stressful endeavor, and mistakes do happen. If there's one thing all robbers should remember, however, it's that your gun is your most valuable asset. This particular robber seemed to forget that fact as he attempted to rob the Halifax Bank in London. Put the money in the bag. Demanding the teller fill the bag with money, he accidentally gave away his gun to the teller instead of the bag. After a brief moment of confusion, the bank worker retreated, forcing the robber to flee. At least he managed to escape with a bank employee's bicycle, and so we still don't know his name. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. MacArthur Wheeler When he was arrested for robbing two banks in Pittsburgh in 1995, MacArthur Wheeler was genuinely incredulous. His logic had been impeccable. Lemon juice is used in invisible ink, therefore if he rubbed his face with lemon juice, no one would be able to see his face. Right? Right. Psychologists who studied the case named it the Dunning-Kruger effect, a cognitive bias in which unskilled people are least able to perceive their own incompetence, and so become overconfident. In other words, when people are really dumb, they can't see how dumb they really are. Do you know of any more silly criminal stories? Let us know in the comments. Where the hell did you take your shoes off? Why the hell are you dressed like a chicken? Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.